Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's not me and today we're discussing the third part of our cranial cavity series this is the posterior cranial fossa the deepest of all of these fossas and let's begin uh, the posterior cranial fossa is basically lying after the middle cranial fossa posteriorly and it chiefly contains the hind brain all right the hind brain there is the pons and medulla in front and the cerebellar hemispheres in the posterior portion of it before we start any fossa we should know which bones are constituting each fossa right so the first bone is something we studied in the middle cranial fossa this was the uh, petrous temporal bone so basically your temporal bone uh, has a squamous a petrous part and a mastoid part right so uh, the petrous part and the mastoid part are included in the posterior cranial fossa and then we have the uh, major bone which is the occipital bone this is the entire occipital bone on the sides we have the parietal bones their mastoid angles more specifically and finally a bit a small portion of the sphenoid bone in the front as the dorsum cilia i hope you remember that i'm going to tell you some important landmarks here and then we're going to go into the, discussing the boundaries of this uh, fossa so that you're not completely blank when i talk about the boundaries right the posterior cranial fossa is beginning anteriorly from this sloping surface this sloping surface is very important it is known as the clivus all right this clivus is basically formed from body of the sphenoid bone including the dorsum cilia above and below by the basilar part of the occipital bone so overall the occipital bone is divided into three parts you can see this huge foramen right here this is known as the foramen magnum this divides your occipital bone into three parts uh, anterior to the foramen is the basilar part of the occipital bone it's also known as the basi occiput uh the part that is lying lateral to the foramen magnum this is known as the condylar part of the occipital bone and the one lying posterior this huge part is the squamous part of the occipital bone right so the clivus is formed by the the basi occiput below and above by the dorsum cilia uh, the clivus laterally is extending over here you can see that the petrous bone is forming a junction with this occipital bone uh in the clivus area this is known as the petro occipital fissure at this junction at this fissure lies your inferior petrosal sinus so guys basically i'm going to be talking a lot about sinuses today sinuses are basically uh venous spaces basically your uh, brain has to and your meninges have uh venous blood to be drained right so it is drained via these sinuses sinuses are just mean empty spaces at the petro occipital fissure lies your inferior petrosal sinus and in the extreme posterior end of this fissure you will see this foramen right here you can see on both sides this is known as the jugular foramen all right the jugular foramen superior boundary is notched notch we all know what notch means means like an arch structure so notch is uh, known as the glossopharyngeal notch because obviously glossopharyngeal nerve the ninth cranial nerve will be passing from there therefore there is a notch over there right so there is a jugular foramen lying at the posterior end of your uh, petro occipital uh fissure structures that pass through the jugular foramen are the ninth which is the glossopharyngeal 10th and 11th nerve the inferior petrosal sinus and the sigmoid sinus along with that the meningeal branches of the ascending pharyngeal and occipital arteries the contents of the foramen is something that you should always memorize and know very well so that is the jugular foramen now let's get back to the clivus area clivus has basically two function is that it houses the basilar plexus of veins and the second function is that it supports your pons and medulla which is a part of the hind brain lying in front coming posterior to this area in the median plane you can see this foramen called the foramen magnum the structures that pass through the foramen magnum that is a uh, extremely important question right so for that i've made this mnemonic uh more importantly i just want you to know basically foramen magnum is through which your spinal cord will pass down so from the brain your spinal cord originates uh from the lowest most part and it passes through this foramen magnum and goes down into your spinal uh, vertebras right uh within their vertebral canals I've made a mnemonic to learn the structures in the foramen magnum this is that if you turn on the tv and turn to channel 11 it is a complete scam twice i have been scammed uh, so scam square right so tv11 scam square so this goes like t is for the tectorial membrane v is for the vertebral arteries uh the 11th is the basically the accessory nerve the cranial nerve 11 which passes from here its root passes here s for the spinal arteries these are the anterior and posterior spinal arteries c is for the uh, cruciate ligament a is for the apical ligament 
the two m stand for the most important structures the first m is for the medulla your medulla the hind brain uh, part the medulla oblongata through from which your spinal cord begins is going to be lying the lower part of it is going to be lying in this foramen magnum and and the other m is for the meninges obviously the coverings of the spinal cord are also going to pass through this so these are the structures passing through this foramen magnum now let's talk about what's lying in the lateral part of the foramen magnum which is also known as the condylar part of the occipital bone the first thing you see is this raised area on both sides this is known as the jugular tubercle i hope you can see it it is lying over the occipital condyle. The next thing you'll see just below the jugular tubercles are two canals lying just at the margin of the foramen magnum. These canals are for the 12th cranial nerve known as a hypoglossal canal. So for passes through here, the 12th cranial nerve through these canals. Hypoglossal canal is also known as the anterior condylar canal. Why? Because there is a posterior condylar canal as well. And this is lying just posterior. You can see this is the jugular foramen. Just posterior to it, uh, at the ending of sigmoid sulcus, you will see this canal known as a posterior condylar canal. Now, let's talk about the parts of the petrous temporal bone that are lying in this area. Uh, first thing you will see is this uh, lying just above the jugular foramen. This for foramen right here on both sides. This is known as the internal acoustic meatus. So through this passes your two important nerves known as the uh, facial nerve and the vestibular cochlear nerve, basically the seventh and eighth cranial nerves. Along with that, the labyrinthine vessels are also going to pass through here. Another important thing you'll see in the petrous part of the temporal bone, obviously we remember this is the anterior surface, this was superior border, this is the posterior surface. Now the posterior surface is what is in the posterior cranial fossa. So posterior surface of the uh, petrous temporal bone, I've talked about the internal acoustic meatus. Uh, going back, if you remember, we talked about this arcuate eminence in the anterior surface of the petrous bone. Just behind this arcuate eminence, you'll see here in the posterior part of the petrous bone is going to be this uh, fossa. This is known as a sub-arcuate fossa. Sub means below. Arcuate means this arcuate eminence right here. Just below it, there is a fossa or like you can say a grooved area. Sub-arcuate fossa is lying here. Now let's move towards the posterior side. Uh, in the posterior side, you can see this very important protuberance we all know in the posterior part of the uh, occipital bone this there was this very prominent external occipital protuberance opposite to this inside this is known as the internal occipital protuberance significance of this you will find the confluence of the sinuses something you'll study uh, in a later stage right the connecting point of the internal occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum you can see this very uh, prominent crest like portion this is known as the internal occipital crest now, just when the internal occipital crest nears this foramen magnum, you can see that there is a fossa that is formed. So this fossa or this gutter that is formed is known as the vermian fossa. On either side of the internal occipital protuberance, you can see these prominent uh, grooves. These are known as the transverse sulci. They will house your transverse sinuses. Now, the transverse sinuses, if you trace them anteriorly, they go ahead and go into these. They're continuous with these, which is sigmoid sulcus so if you see if you see the transverse sinus groove follow it it continues into the sigmoid sulcus the sigmoid sulcus you can see here it is like a groove area you can see uh, this sigmoid sulcus houses obviously the sigmoid sinus and from here we remember the posterior uh, condylar canal is coming and you can see on either side of the internal occipital crest you see these uh, really deep uh, occipital fossas these are basically for your two cerebellar hemispheres now let's talk about the boundaries of the posterior cranial fossa now that you have a lot of knowledge about what's happening here uh, let's talk about the anterior boundary the first uh, part of the anterior boundary is obviously going to be the superior part what is this a superior border of the petrous temporal bone and this is the dorsum celli of the sphenoid bone posteriorly is your squamous part of the occipital bone and on either side this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone and the mastoid angle of your parietal bone which is lying here let's talk about the floor the floor is also having a median area and a lateral area the median area is beginning from the clivus the foramen magnum leading to your squamous part of the occipital bone behind in the lateral part you will begin with your uh, you can see this lateral area which is a condylar part of the occipital bone posterior surface of your petrous temporal bone and going posteriorly you'll see this is the mastoid bone again and mastoid angle of the parietal bone so this is the floor coming from here so that was all you needed to know about the posterior cranial fossa i really hope you understood today's lesson stay tuned until my next video until then thank you so much for watching